Thank you for choosing to watch this video. Using a slightly different format this time, after some f kind feedback, I will not be using any background music. This is a fairly easy fly to die, and you should be able to rattle quite a few off quickly. So, first off, mount your bead on your hook and fix it in the vise. As always, testing the hold and hook. This is a 4.6mm copper tungsten bead. It's a slotted bead to suit the jig hook. Check that the bead's positioned correctly on the vise. It doesn't matter too much as it can move around until you've got a good bit of thread behind it. Catch on your thread and build up a little dam of thread. You don't worry too much about this at this point because of the size of the bead, which is quite big for the hook. It takes quite a lot of thread to hold it in place. Trim off the waist thread. As I said, this is quite a simple fly and it only consists of really three other materials and two of those are the same material in different colours. Catch on your gel core micro fritz from Semperfly. I tie this down over the full length of the body and then into the bend of the hook. This is to help maintain the profile of the fly as we build it up. So. There are other similar patterns where the peeping section of the carus is left free, but for this fly I'm tying it round the bend of the hook and I will wind it back up to the end of the shank. I'm using Semperfly Nano Silk here. It's a nice strong thread, it's as thin, doesn't build up too much bulk. So, wind the micro fritz back up at the bend of the hook in touching turns. This represents the peeping head of the caddis. Once you've got to the shank, catch in, and again tie this down over the full length of the shank. Catch it in right up to the back of the bead. This helps create a good foundation for the bead. As you can see the bead moving forward towards the eye of the hook as I tie this in. Trim off the waist and you can tidy this up a bit. The next step is to add on the legs, but first I'm creating a little bit of a foundation. Often you'll see the legs added by cutting a V in a feather and tying in the two bunches either side of the head, the peeping head of the fly. I have tried a different way of doing this, so again, use, still using partridge feather for the legs. I catch it in near the bead and wrap it as you would a normal hackle. So to prevent the feather, remove the fluff from the base, check the length of the barbules are going to be enough to give you the legs you need at the end of the fly. And as I say, catch it in as you normally would. and double back the tip and tie that in. If the tip's short enough you could also tie that down the length of the fly but to make sure I get a neat finish I want to pull the tip out. It can be a little difficult to separate the tip from the other barbules. Just take your time. 
and if you make a bodge of it like I just have and rip half the feather off with it you'll just have to take it off and find another one. Please bear with me, I'm looking for a, a nice speckled brown partridge feather roughly from the middle of the back to suit this size of fly. This time. So again, preparing the feather, pulling away the fluff from the base. I knew I'd have roughly the right size because I took it from the same area as the previous feather. As I bend the tip back this time, I'm being slightly more careful to keep it misaligned from the stock so it will be easier to pull out. As you can see, it's sitting towards the base of the fly, and I'll use my hackle pliers to be a bit more careful. There we go. That's it tied in and secure. So as I wind the partridge feather, I'll double back the feather. I find this gives an even distribution of the feathers around the hook and in some ways makes it easier to control how the legs will sit at the end of the fly. So a couple, two or three turns should be enough for the fly. It will depend on the feather you're using. The beauty of doing it this way is it gives you a nice coverage of the everything on the shank of the hook as you tie the feather down. So you don't see so much of the, the bright chenille or fritz showing through the body of the fly. And I find it's less footery to get the feathers to sit where you want. It still takes a little bit of manipulation, so take your time and check as you work. And don't be afraid to go back if you're not happy with where the barbules are sitting. Once you're happy with the legs, take the thread back up the body towards the bead, tidying up the underbody as we go. The next step will to be dyeing the body material, which is uh, the same gel core micro fritz from Simply in a cinnamon colour. But before we tie it in, we want to make sure our underbody is nice and smooth and our bead is fully fixed in place. Again, cats on the micro frets behind the bead, as tight as you can to the bead. If you throw a loose strap over the frets you can pull it to length and adjust it to suit. You want to make sure you tie it down right down back to the back of the fly where you tied in the legs. So there's no unsightly gap when we start winding it back up the fly. And then wind your body material in touching turns. You can try and bend some of the fibres back but they're quite short on this fritz. And you should just achieve the effect we need just by winding in touching turns and not worrying too much. As I say, this is a beautifully simple flyer, and once you get used to the se tying sequence, you can rattle quite a few out. You may want to add an extra turn behind the bead, just to make sure we've got a nice profile. Catch on the frets with your thread, a couple of turns. 
few locking turns in front and then trim away. Then just make sure you're happy with where everything is and it's tidy enough and then we just need to whip finish. Here I'm applying some thin UV varnish to the thread before I whip finish. You could of course do the same with normal tying varnish. Throw in a three, three or four turn whip finish. Pull it tight and set the resin with the torch. You can see the nice fluorescence of the peeping head. Trim off your thread and that's the fly finished. Thank you again for choosing to watch this video. If you've enjoyed it please drop it a like and subscribe to my channel. As always any comments and feedbacks would be greatly appreciated and if there's any flies or techniques you'd like to see me demonstrate please just mention them in the comments below. Thank you.